Hello, I'm Jeremy Wade. I've just been talking to Kara on Really Famous and I've just been sitting here relaxing and, um, and talking too much. This is Really Famous. I'm Kara Mayer Robinson and I interview famous people, but I don't just interview them like your typical interview. I'm not really interested in those same old questions. Instead, I like to know who they really are and what they really think. Jeremy Wade is today's Really Famous guest. So I didn't really know much about Jeremy before he came in and sat down for the podcast. Um, I knew he was on one of those nature shows, but I didn't really specifically know that he's the host of River Monsters and a new show called Mighty Rivers, both on Animal Planet. So yeah, he catches fish on TV, but that is definitely not all he does. He has tons of stories, like he got malaria, and he lived with no proper home or proper job for almost two decades. I think that's kind of cool. Something that people tend to think about Jeremy is that he was just plucked off the street and given a show, but that's not at all what happened. There's a story behind it. So Jeremy was recently in New York. He lives in a small town in England called Froome, and he popped over to the Ryu Plaza, New York, Times Square. Thank you to the Ryu for hosting us. If you want to see behind the scenes photos, click on the episode notes or check out reallyfamouspodcast.com. If you already watch his show, River Monsters on Animal Planet, you will definitely dig his brand new show, Mighty Rivers, where he explores how really ruinous conditions in rivers like the Amazon, the Ganges, and the Mississippi are impacting life. It's crazy. I sat down and watched the first episode with my son, Charlie, and we're watching Jeremy discover that there is a seriously high level of human waste in this one river, and yet he's asked to dunk in the river. So Charlie and I are looking at each other like, oh my God, is he gonna do it? So what does he do? You'll find out. Before we begin, I wanna tell you about our new sponsor, Orvis. Orvis wants you to get outside this spring and give fly fishing a try. It's easy and they offer free fly fishing 101 classes at their retail stores across the country, including their Orvis New York City store on Fifth Avenue. Visit orvis.com slash FF101 to find one near you. And for a limited time, really famous listeners can enjoy free shipping by using the offer code FAMOUS at checkout on orvis.com. Offer ends May 14th, so get a jump on your shopping now. And now here's Jeremy Wade. Have you been on a podcast yet? Oh, the town where I live has a, the, there's, there's a radio station there. We, we, we think probably sometimes even just four people listen to it, and it's a, there's a music show that a friend of mine does, and then that gets archived as a podcast. So I'm the, I'm, I'm there somewhere. That's so it, really it, famous is your second podcast, and it's your yeah. first really for a podcast podcast. It is, it is exactly. Do you get recognized when you're like in New York, for example? Do people see you on the street and say, "Oh my God, it's Jeremy Wade," or do they just say they think they know you or something? Yeah, I recognise quite a bit actually. I think there's always a bit of a double take because it's that out of context thing, yeah. and I tend to, uh, I, t you know, I tend to look a little bit smarter when I'm when I'm here. I think people are. So, it's it's interesting because in my case, uh, when I'm on TV, I, I look untidy. I, I, that's the whole thing. It's about looking rugged and a bit of a mess, and so people look at me. Um, normally, people, yeah, there's a bit of a double take. So you just see them; they don't approach you, or do they come up and say? Hey. Do, yeah, people do come up. What? What's really nice is a lot of people say my kids watch. I mean, we get an awful lot of kids watching, which is really nice, which we never expected when we started. I mean, we, we, we didn't want to make um, River Monsters just for people who, who fish. We wanted to, what we wanted to do was show fish to a wider audience. I mean, fish, uh, particularly river fish, uh, that, that's something that you won't see on natural history programs because they tend to live in, in, in muddy water. You know, you send your cameraman in with very expensive gear, they're going to come out with just a sort of a brown smear. They're not going to see anything. So we, we wanted to show fish to people, and, and the, the, the ones that live in fresh water tend to be they look a lot different from the, they're not the nice pretty ones that you get in the sea, the nice coral reef. No, they, these, you know, these are things with sort of tentacles and they're, you know, they're yeah. slimy and a bit, a bit 
you know, yeah, a bit, a bit monstrous in the in the sense that they're a bit outlandish and weird. But but kids really love all that stuff. Yeah, and ex- I remember I just watched one the other night, and in fact, I have like one of those kids. Right. So I was watching the first episode of Mighty Rivers, and I had my son Charlie with me. He was so enthralled in the show, loved it, and he said. Like, oh, he, it's just so great because he shows people things that they would never even know about otherwise, which is true. So it's not just for people who fish. Exactly. I mean, this is yeah. a different show yes, than yes. River Monsters yeah. anyway. Yeah. But still, it's exactly what you're saying. Well, it's inter- I'm, 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 you know, really encouraged that he he liked that because what we've what we've we've kept some of the DNA, well, quite a bit of it, but we've we've moved it into a into a slightly different area, and it's possibly. I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe there's a. It, it needs the audience to sort of keep up a little bit more. I, d- I don't know. We still. It, it's still a story. It's still a journey. Um, but it's uh, it's 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 still an investigation. But it's a different different type of investigation. And I think any sort of investigation, once you once you've once you're you're hooked, once you know that there's a, there's a journey, there'll be some kind of revelation. Then you stay with it. Right, and it's mm. different though. You don't necessarily know. I mean, you have that purpose, right? Of like, what's the condition of the river now, and mm. are these fish still doing well and healthy, or, or is this, or is it too late? Mm. Right? Am I saying that properly? Yeah, that's, I don't pretty, even know that's, if that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay. So- and also, well, the other thing very important is is uh, if there is a problem, what can we do about it? Um, that's very much part of it because we don't want it to be a sort of a finger wagging, doom and gloom um, show. We we want to, if there is hope out there, we want to show it. I don't want to give anything away. I will just say, what about the whole situation with the condition of the river, uh, the Ganges River? Mm. And how can I say this? What the chemical makeup was? Yeah. Am I not giving away too much? Yeah. There, was a, there was a surprise yeah, it's, about it's the it's chemical makeup hard. of the river. Yeah. And then you were asked to go in the river. Yes. So what what is what can you say about that? That was a real to me. What we're both watching. My son and I are watching. We're like, oh my god, is he going to go in? What's going to happen? Do you know that, that that is really interesting because we've we've got a lot of reaction from that. And, and at the time, I, I I didn't. I just did it. I didn't consider it to be a particularly uh, big deal. And actually, this got us thinking again to the whole. The, the DNA of river monsters. What we try and do is we. It's almost like the viewer is 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 just just behind me, just over my shoulder. And and what we what we do is we try and take somebody with us, not just physically, but also uh, intellectually. Uh, here I am. I'm starting this investigation. Uh, this is the information I've got. What I'm going to do? I'm going to start talking to people. I'm going to start checking things out. I'm going to follow up leads. And if you just without you know, without having to expend too much energy, just 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 pay attention, and and you can follow it. And I think this this is the great thing. You know, there's a lot of biology in there, there's a lot of science, and a lot of kids uh, will watch and they go, yeah, I get that completely. I, I'm I'm with this, and so they're always with me. But then somebody said, there's all there's always a point during the program where they go, oh no, I wouldn't do that. And and I think that was the that was the moment uh, that was the moment in in, in that show. It's like, we didn't think oh, you well, would do I, it. Yeah, well, I was. I have some fairly scary directors, you see. So I'm, I'm, uh, I have my motivation is if I don't do what I'm told, I'm, I'm, I'm back on the job market, and I'm fairly un- well. I used to be pretty unemployable, so I don't know if I'd, I'd find anything else. But um, so I just, I just, you yeah, just did it. I just did, and it, you didn't yeah. worry about it after. No, I mean, the, the, I, I have actually got a pretty cast iron constitution I, because I've spent so much time traveling in, in, in all sorts of places. Um, we, did a, we did a program a couple of years ago about, um, about parasites. Um, a couple of the crew members that I work with had, had picked up some pretty nasty stuff and other people were getting checked out and, and we thought, oh, let's do a... Because I've been not just to the places, you know, I've been to the places where all the different crew have gone. We, we, we tend to rotate the crews. So um, so I went along... So you've been to every place even though they have nec- yes. not necessarily... Yes, so in theory I should have picked up everything that right, anybody else has Right, but you haven't. Put. And yeah, they did, they did all these tests and I went in for the results. It's all very dramatic going, as now you're fine. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> They're like, this is not right. Yeah. But you got malaria, I read. Yeah, oh, that was a so quite, what, yeah. Well, how did that happen and where? Well, I mean, obviously how, but when and 
then? Uh, that was a long time ago. That was, let me see, that was 1990. That was in the Congo. And um, I mean, a lot of people might think, well, you obviously weren't taking your medication, but I was. I was taking, the thing is, um, if, if you get bitten a lot, which I was, it can overwhelm the medication and also you know there's resistant strains and whatnot so um so even if uh, you've had all your medication yes, you still get it yes okay. there, there is a risk of that um it was actually it was quite a long story because what happened is is i just uh it was just one evening and i just i just suddenly um i think i just suddenly got really really hot and uh, i thought um i thought it was heat exhaustion um it was like a switch it just came on so suddenly and um and then over the next few days it, it, it turned into this cyclical thing you know alternating um sweats and, and shivers what what used to happen I, at the at the end of the day i would just get really really cold this is on the equator i just get really cold and, and so what i do i'd crawl into my tent i say tent i was tr i was floating on a um a, rog, a log raft down the river at the time but i put the tent up um crawl into that get into a sleeping bag put all my clothes on and and just and shiver and then i'd wake up in the middle of the night Absolutely um, boiling, and what, what I and, and I would just I would just take all my clothes off, stand outside with my, my my arms out, just trying to radiate heat, and of course this is this is when all the mosquitoes come and they they, they oh. then bite you and then and then transmit the disease. That's how that's, that's partly crazy. how it works. So were you scared but, um, at that point? I do you know at the time I st it took me a long time to accept that it was malaria because I because I had been taking the medication and uh, I even had we passed a little sort of field um, there was a little field hospital it was just it was just like a concrete shack somewhere and the only all they did was was do mosquito um, malaria tests and. I had a blood test there. I had my own sort of, you know, blood giving sets and that, you know, just out of, out of sort of safety. But they, they did a, um, they did a test and said, no, it's not malaria. And so I said, well, what is it? They said, well, we don't know. Uh, but, but in the end, I mean, just it, it got it got really bad. It got to the point where um, my my urine was almost black, you know, because of all the red blood cells dying and and you know, that's. Um, that was fairly scary, and, and my vision started to go. Oh so God. it was it was a bit like snow blindness, where everything was just overexposed and whited out. And in the end, um, all this time, I did have a, a malaria remedy with me, but it was it's, it's a very powerful drug. You don't want to be taking stuff like that unless you've got good reason to. And in the end, I thought, no, it's got to be malaria. So I, I popped these pills, and, and I had two nights of intense. Sweating, and then I was, so and then I was fine. It it just, and then I was, I was just okay. Yeah. That's what. So, mm. were you with anybody else at that point? Were there I was, who I, I was, I was traveling with two other people at the time. So, what did they so, think? Uh, um, well, they were, they were sort of enduring their own private, uh, sort of non-malarial. Um, so that, you know, that, that they, it was it, it, just the very process of, of, of traveling was was a struggle. We were, like I say, we were floating down this river on a raft. Oh uh, we transferred to a boat. We got kicked off the boat. We then got into a truck. The truck broke down. We were walking, and and it was it was it, it was a nightmare even without the malaria. So um, there was actually a time I do remember this. Um, it, it, what's what's quite interesting is that um, before I was working on TV, I used to. Um, write about my experiences. I, I, I was hoping that, that there might be some kind of career of some sort in, in all this. I did get a few articles published here and there, but there's part of me that when you're going through something like that, I split into, into two. There's, there's the me that's experiencing it, and then there's the observer. And so observing the whole process of malaria was quite fascinating. But it got to the point where I didn't have the energy to to write in my notebook. I just didn't for a couple of days. I, I wrote nothing, but I do remember at one point, uh, and this was after we'd been on this truck which broke down. Um, I we were just walking, walking, walking under the equatorial sun, and and I was seeing these little bushes beside the road with a little bit of shade under the bush, and I just thought. Um, the option of just crawling into some shade and going to sleep and never waking up actually seemed almost preferable to to what I was going through. That is yeah. something else. I can mm. only imagine. And that was so you were at that point after the malaria then what happened? Did you 
you took the you took the remedy yes. and then it was done. Uh, yeah, that was the, that was the end. Uh, I'd, I'd spent two months in in the Congo at that point, so we were traveling back to the to the to the capital. So we ended up. This was in um, Congo Brazzaville. So we ended up in in Brazzaville. Um, yeah, I, I was just it, it. It just went. I was very I was very weakened. Um, and and then, then a couple of days later, we uh, we were flying Aeroflot. Then we you know that was that was all very interesting trying to get a seat on the plane. But you know we wait 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 wait. wait. And, I wasn't uh, that part. <laughs> um, what, what was that? Oh, it was just you know the whole uh, the, the the only way to get there, or the cheapest way back then, was was on Aeroflot, and it was all it was very chaotic. Just getting, we had we had uh, we had tickets booked, but it was, but uh, it didn't mean like a great deal. So it was quite a quite a sort of struggle just getting on the plane, and then uh, a few days back, a few days after that, I was back home in in England. So yeah. after that, like there's no, it has no impact on you physically. No, um, certain types of malaria um, can come back. I mean, what what I did. I mean, a lot of this was sort of self-medicating. I, I, you know, I'd done an awful lot of research back then because uh, very often, if you're in the middle of nowhere, you're not going to have any any medical help. You can have you, you know, you can have as, as much insurance as you like and as much money as you like. It's not going to make the slightest bit of difference in the, in the middle of nowhere. So, I did have. Um, you know, I did have medication. I'd done all my research about the different types of malaria. So, what happened um, after taking this original remedy, which I believe is no longer you know, you can't get it in the in the West. It's you know, it's 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 that nasty. Why? Well, what is? Oh, that's a bad it, remedy. It, it's, then. it's yeah. I mean, it, it can mess up your heart rhythm and all sorts. It's you know, that's why you don't want to take it if it's you know, unless uh -huh. there's good reason. You know, I'm 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 not. I'm very very. I am normally very reluctant to take any kind of medication. I you know, I prefer to let my my system deal with it. Like you know, if I get in, if I get some kind of stomach bug or whatever, I, you know, I I just want to sort it out. And then if you sort it out, you're you are then stronger next time round. I mean, you know, I, I work with quite a lot of people, they'll, they'll just drop a pill for anything, and you know, that tends to be um, tends to be the way that a lot of people operate, but I would rather not do that. Um, and it works for you, like it seems to have worked it, it, for you. It generally, yeah, yeah, but something, you know, something like malaria, you, know, you are going to need to take something, and so what I did, I took this one very powerful remedy, and then what I did after that, uh, I then had, I had some other tablets, and I just thought, well, in, you know, in case there's different types of parasites in, in there, this, this, will, this will knock anything else on the head, so I did that, I took that. Um, and then when I got home, um, I did go and see my my GP, my doctor, and said, "Look, this you know this has happened, and I, you know I understand that some types of malaria it can recur." And so he said, "Well, the only way we can tell is if you if you get a fever at all, what you need to do you need to come in and get a get a blood test while you're having a fever." Uh, but I've never had anything since, so I think that you know that I think I did I managed to clear it from the system. And that was a long time ago. That was 1990, 1990. So? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so you hopefully time. are good to go at this point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some story. You have so many stories. I would imagine. So you grew up in England. You studied biology, correct? Yeah. And you became a biology teacher. Yes, very briefly. Okay, so can you walk me through that? So. You study biology. Yeah, you I, love I, it. You're into science, yes. the human body. Actually, go back a little bit for, okay. before that. I was, I was, I was going to. I was originally going to go to art college, and that that all fell through. So, so the so going and studying biology was my plan B. So I did that, um, and then. Wait, can we back up a little more? Yeah. So what? How did you grow up? What was your family like? Your parents. Um, my father was was a vicar, so he was a he was a priest, Church of England priest. So I grew up in the vicarage, which was quite a strange. Well, I say now it's quite strange. At the time, obviously, it was completely normal. Um, so there would be all sorts of people visiting the house. Um, we would get a lot of, um, well, not a lot, but from time to time we get we get sort of vagrants turning up, you know, because that is, and, and we make them sandwiches and a cup of tea or whatever, and uh, yeah, so that was um, an, an interesting uh, yeah, uh, upbringing, and so it wasn't, I, I wasn't, um, I wasn't force-fed religion. Um, but it was expected that I was I would go to church and uh, and what what happened was in, in my teens I sort of I, I sort of well you, when you're in your teens you sort of just rebel against everything don't you I just well, that's enough of that I'm not doing this anymore and uh, um, and how did your dad feel about that 
I think was 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 clearly uh, was was very upset about that. Um, accepted it. Uh, I mean, he was always. Um, I know that he hoped that I have, I've got two brothers. He hoped that one of us would would follow him in in the. I, I was going to say family tradition. It wasn't a tradition at all. I mean, he was um, his his father was actually a farmer. And his mother actually disowned him when, or pretty well disowned him, when he decided that he was going to walk away from that and, you know, he had this call to do something else. Um, but no, my father hoped that, that one of us would um, follow in his footsteps, but none of us did. But that's interesting too, then he, yeah. so he had already been through that, where he wasn't doing what his father had hoped. Yeah. Did, well, I see, you see, what was interesting then was that, was that I, I spent a lot of time, so I told you that I, I, I worked very briefly as a, as a teacher, and I, and, I, and I got out of that. And I, I spent a lot of time doing all sorts of different things. I didn't have any, any um, proper career for a long time. And I think my parents were simultaneously quite disappointed but at the same time, it's sort of quite proud uh, because you know they'd all get together and you know everyone was talking about their kids, what they're doing, and they're all doing this. They're all working in banking here. They're a lawyer. Yeah. Is that yes. you know, what's you know what's banking? What's I your, think better. Nothing can be more proud of than banking, right? <laughs> but you know, all and anyway, all you yeah. know, all, all get all getting paid. You know, like, like professionals. Yeah, professional people. Mm -hmm. And then what's Jeremy doing? Oh, he's I don't know. He's 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 somewhere in the Congo. Contracting you know? malaria. <laughs> yeah, why? <it's> like, <laughs> And you know that's a little bit different. People say, oh, "All right," and then you know yeah. the conversation would move on. But um, I think I think they quite like that. Uh, yeah. yeah. So you, are you in the are you the middle child? I feel I'm like you the are. oldest. You're I'm, the so oldest. I'm, I'm like the trailblazer. Oh, that yeah, is not yeah. right. You're supposed to be I know, like I know, right, Mister Perfect. The uh, goes yeah. the traditional route. Yes, and exactly. becomes very responsible. Exactly. Yeah. So you were the first. And yeah. what about your two younger brothers? What did they end up doing? Uh, my the the, the, ne the next oldest uh, went into teaching, and the my youngest brother is he's he's a bit like me. He's um, he is a photographer, but he doesn't really make any money out of that. So he, he, so he does construction work on the side and um, looks after his kids while his wife goes out and uh, makes the money. So look, though, yeah. in a way though, you've all taken your own path. And look, that's what your dad did. Your father did the yeah. same thing, yeah. right? He followed his own path that he yeah. felt uh, yes. was calling him or whatever, yes. calling him. Exactly. And, and I, th I, think, I think there is a real similarity there. And, yeah. and, and, and I, I did feel that, um, I did feel that he, he you know, and my mother, they, they, they both actually understood what I was, what I was trying to do. Um, yeah, unfortunately, you know, they never, you know, my father ne uh, never saw the the full sort of realization of it. Oh, uh, that's too bad. He would have probably been so proud. Yeah, I think so. I mean, he, it's funny. He he was he was quite dismissive of of television, to be honest. It was quite funny because I was uh, I would I would write articles and occasionally they'd get published, and I was I was struggling on a book for a long time, um, and occasionally I'd, I'd get um, just TV appearances on. In England, on sort of chat shows and things like that, and he was, he was, it was funny. He was quite sort of dismissive of, of, of that, but I, I don't know what he would have made of um, what I've done since. But it's not yeah. just that you've appeared on TV; you've mm. you've done things. You know, the things that are airing on TV or that have aired on TV. You're not just mm. entertaining people; you're mm. actually teaching people. You're educating. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, exactly. And and uh, and again, it's quite it's it's interesting because I think when I started off as well, um, so River Monsters, it's a, it's a popular program, and I think having grown up with sort of the BBC Natural History Unit and uh, all this, you know, very very. Uh, very lush sort of nature, um, you know, documentaries and all that. You see, th that was part of me that thought, oh, you know, shame I can't be doing that. But, you know, I, th I think a lot of, you know, I don't want to sort of diss that kind of program, but um, a lot of those programs are very much preaching to the converted. And, and one thing I'm very proud of with, with River Monsters is that it's, it's sort of smuggled, you know, we, they, they are very, um, and, um, educational as well as in entertaining, and, and I think that we've got a lot of people watching a kind of programming that they would never normally 
watch and, and, and so I, I think in terms of sort of reaching a, an audience and getting people to appreciate things and think about things I, I think I think um, you know, the, the, the whole it is it is very much a collaboration but I think you know, the whole team has done something very very special and very unusual yeah it's a big accomplishment not just stardom mm. you're not just getting stardom mm. or viewers or whatever else or numbers or whatever so no. you okay so you decided to be a teacher and you said you didn't last very long so no, why not what was the it's, deal it's really hard work you know it's, uh, it's, it's so this is in England and um, I got into that very accidentally. What happened, I, I, I left university and I was basically not doing anything at all and one of my friends uh, phoned me up I think and said, what are you doing? I said, nothing. He says, well why don't you, he says, we've just had an argument with somebody in our house, we've got a spare room, why don't you come and live here? And I, and I sort of went, well what am I going to do? He said, I was a teacher training college up the road, you could go there. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so, so to cut a long story short, I ended up, you know, it was, anyway, so I was, um, my plan at that time was to was to go to London and, and be a motorbike um, messenger in London. Um, <laughs> a motorbike but, messenger. So taking which, actually which, like which, which I ended up I ended up doing that. But I but I but I did I did teach for a while. One one of the schools that I did um, that I that I went to as part of my course had a vacancy and nobody wanted it. Nobody wanted it. In, in the end, I went there and I worked there for six months. But um, it, it's it's interesting because it 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 is. It is a fantastic experience. I mean, it's, it's one of those things that, in in theory, it ought to be the best job you could you could ever do. And and, and I I have experienced what that is like. And it's interesting because you know, teaching it, it is a performance. You have to, you have to plan it. You have to rehearse it almost. And and then it's all about you've got to get people's attention at the beginning, and you've got to take them through and. The emphasis very much, certainly in England, about teaching. It's all about discipline. It's all about punishments, and all, isn't it? it's not about that at all. It's about it's about inspiring people. It's about getting their attention. Um, but in order to do that properly, there's a lot of um, preparation. And I was every night I was working until somewhere between one and three o'clock. And I just thought I just can't do this anymore. You know, I just can't do this. And at the same time, teachers were getting very. Um, just very, uh, you know, just just blamed for everything that's wrong with you know society, the country. It's all teachers' fault. They're all lazy. They're all just, you know, they. You know. And I just thought, I just, you know, it's literally adding insult to injury. I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spend my life doing this. I'm gonna, I, I, I had no idea what I was gonna do. Well, that's when I just, I just moved to London and uh, I started riding a motorbike and delivering. Delivering parcels around London, I thought, yeah, I'll do that for a while. And then, where did you stay? Where did you live at that point? Did you have to pay any rent? Anywhere? I lived in a. I, I, I had some uh, some people I knew. It wasn't quite a squat, but there, there was this house, <laughs> and I paid. Let me see. When I went there, this was a long time ago. But my rent, my weekly rent, was like two pounds forty a week. Is what we did. So that would be about about four dollars or something a, a week. Um, it's reasonable. The, my room had no glass in the windows. Um, the house, there were no banisters on the stairs. I mean it was, it was, it was, I think there'd been a fire there or something and uh, anyway it was cheap. That was the thing, it was cheap. So I was, I, I had very, very little in the way of outgoings and I was making, you know, I was making a bit of money. I was managing to save money, uh, that's the thing. That's pretty um, good. Not many people could do that. Messenger, you know, being a messenger. Exactly. So, so I was, yeah. So I, I was saving money. I didn't, I didn't really quite know. I, I had a vague idea at that point that I wanted to travel, and, and uh, my plan was to go to India. That was going to be my first thing. Um, when I left London, uh, I had a friend who had just, um, he just lost his flat. He needed, you know, he desperately needed somewhere to live. I said, you know, I, I've got a place you can. You can live here, and he came. He came round, and he said, "Look, he said, he, he said, there's, there's no way. He says, there's no way I could live here. <laughs> he was, oh, you know, he was, he, he, was, he was that desperate, but he, could, he, he couldn't live where, where I was. Um, but no, I did. I, I accumulated a bit of money in that time, which, which I put into eventually my the first um, non-European uh, trip that I did." Okay, and then so then, and I had read somewhere that you said that you were you had like no home for years, right? You had no home, mm -hmm. like no almost no income. So your idea was that you would take the money that you already had, start traveling, start writing about it, and yeah. sell the articles. So yeah. were you 
did you have an arrangement already going in with any kind of publication? Like, no, oh yes, we want you to no, cover no. this. Nothing like no, that. Not at all. Not at all. No, I, 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 I bought some books. You know, teach yourself. Uh, teach yourself or journal, journalism, mm -hmm. yes, which is you know obviously as you know is, is totally different from writing essays at school. It's a completely different thing. So I, I, I taught myself, um, and I sort of worked my way up. Uh, I got a few things published in sort of like free newspapers and things. And uh, no, it's interesting how it works. What you know, what you, what you, as soon as you if, if you can get yourself into something a little bit prestigious, then suddenly people pay a little bit more attention. Um, but I didn't make very much money. I mean, the first trip that I did this trip to India, and um, I came back from that, and I wrote one article. I wrote no, I wrote two articles. One they paid me like forty pounds, so like was it fifty dollars or something? The other one was about thirty dollars. That was nineteen eighty-two. Uh, they still haven't paid me for yeah. the, the, the second. <laughs> yeah, I believe the, it. I believe the, the I'm a journalist. <laughs> I believe <laughs> it. I know exactly what yeah. you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, so yeah. Anyway, so so I, I, I was I was learning, and and yes, my um, so my my thing was to to try and have a surplus, have a little bit of a financial surplus, and also time. So was there a point where you were like, I can't keep doing this, or did it immediately turn think, into something? No, no, it's it, it's. It didn't really seem to be going anywhere. I, I, there was a lot of pressure just to, to, to get a proper job. I did. I worked in advertising for a while. I did get a because I because I taught myself to write. I, I got a job as a, a, an advertising copywriter. So at some point you decided I, you wanted a job. Yeah. Well, I I used to. I, I think what I what I wanted in a way what I wanted um, was was sort of temporary jobs. If I could get a nice temporary job for a while, the, th the thing is that's not how it works. People look at your CV, there's always huge holes in your CV where, you know, we're not, yeah, we're not yeah. going to employ you because right. you're, 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 you're going to be here for two weeks it, it, and then it, we're going to have to do this exactly. again. Exactly. So eventually I thought, oh, and, and so I, I would apply for jobs from time to time and, and very often, you know, not, you know, normally that wouldn't lead anywhere at all. But I did, I, I just sort of miraculously got this, uh, got this job in an advertising agency and I ended up ended up uh, there for three and a half years but it, it oh, really, that's a long time. it's the longest the longest until, well, until this yes that was the longest uh, yeah my longest job um, but it got to the point there that I just I just couldn't do it any any longer I just I was just very restless I learned an awful lot there um, I think it's been very useful in what I'm doing now because obviously the whole thing about advertising is is you're trying to attract the attention of someone who, who is very resistant to what you uh, want to tell them. So you're trying to interest them. Hey, over here, you know, I've got something, and 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 and, and then get there, and then then you know gradually pull them in, pull them in deeper. Yeah, which is what and you're I, doing now, and it was what you did as a teacher. Exactly. Yes. Same. Yes. Exactly. So 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 I picked up things on the way, which which. So, you know, suddenly now, if I, if I look backwards, my, my life makes sense. It all but, makes but, sense, yeah. But at, but at the time, looking forward, it looked like this is a bit of a waste of time. Yeah. This is going nowhere. I'm going to inject yeah. myself for a right, second yeah, here yeah, just absolutely. so I can tell yeah, you that yeah, yeah. I have the same thing. Right. So I started out after college, I worked at a bank for a year. It was not for me, and I decided yeah. I'd better find something else. So I started, um, I worked for Comedy Central for like six months or something just because it was in entertainment. And then I said, this isn't for me. It's still business. It's still working, you know, in a corporation. I'm going to become a therapist so I went to I heard, grad I school that. yes yes I yeah. went to grad school and I became a therapist yeah. and so for years I was a therapist loving it and then I started writing because I like writing and then I started a podcast so yeah. you know this is what it is but when I look back I learned a little bit of business because yeah. it is my own business I became a therapist so I understand people and talking and you know all of this yes. stuff and then because I'm a journalist you know, but, what, but what it does is it makes you very unique in your in your position because nobody else has that background, and this is what this is what I find. I, I think so much of what people do is, is very uh, predictable, and um, I I like the fact that I've I've got these different. And again, I think this is part of what makes River Monsters successful. It it it, it draws on. It, it's a fairly unique. It's like oh, this is this is very sounds a bit grandiose. It's a, it's a bit like the creation of the world. You know, all these you throw all these atoms together and <laughs> right, boom, right. How, how how can it possibly produce this this thing? But it's it's a bit like that. Yeah, magic um, happens. Yeah, yeah, and. Um, 
Yeah, so, so uh, I lost my train of thought. Oh, uh, right. So, uh, yeah. so you, the advertising, yeah. so it worked out. You learned something from it. So you were there yeah. for a long time, relatively. Yeah. And uh, then what? Um, well, no, I just, I, no, I just, sorry, I just, I just picked up that train of thought. It's, it's like some of the people, um, some of the people I've worked with and some of the crews. There was, there was, well, there was one guy, he was an assistant producer. He'd, he'd been a, he'd, he'd, He'd been a boat skipper for a while, and, and uh, he, he'd just gone off and taught himself to, to operate a boat and, and take people out on, on sort of charter trips and stuff like that. And you think somebody who does that is going to be good at solving problems, and, and that is the kind of person you want in the field somewhere you know, in, in South America or, or wherever who, who's going to sort out a problem that comes our way rather than somebody who's gone through a very predictable totally because uh, he can see things from different angles yeah, on yeah, like yeah. what the problem is and how mm. to figure out think outside the box and do something yeah. about it yeah, yeah that's totally so, true yeah so, so I, I think um, but, I, but, but you see I think but I think it's quite high risk because in, in my situation in, in, in a parallel universe the, it never went anywhere I'm, I'm still living in somebody's spare room you're a bum uh, and, <laughs> exactly and, and, and there's people going isn't it about time you got a proper job yeah, so, yeah. And, and, but nobody will hire me because look why should we and, and so it very nearly it, it could very easily not have happened so you think there's a little like luck thrown in then I think, I think there is yeah exactly and, and one thing I, I must I do get very annoyed by people who, who it's all everybody or not no not everybody a lot of people who are successful it's all because I am so dedicated I am so clever all the rest of it no there are lots of you know there are loads of particularly hard work people it's all about hard work do you know what there's there are so many people in the world who work really really hard they never get anywhere um, it's you have to have that luck as well it, it's meeting the right people at the right time mm -hmm. it's um, so yes I'd, I'd really I, I'd worked I'd suffered uh, but but also I was lucky and and um, but then I took the opportunity and, and then it's about appreciating that luck as well you know this is a it's it, it's a it's a bit of a gift it's it's not something to be squandered. So what where did the luck come in? Like I mean we're forgetting precise right. Yeah. So uh, your advertising is that when you like how did you end up with River Monsters? No, not at all. No, gosh, I, uh, no, I, I left advertising and I that's when I went on a that's when I did my first trip to the Congo and at that time I I, I travelled with somebody who um, who done a TV documentary somewhere else and there was a possibility let's make this a recce trip for you know, maybe maybe there's a documentary in, in the Amazon and so a recce trip was that uh, oh, so it's a research you know oh, what, so, oh, recce uh, trip. Uh, okay. uh, a recon recon is the word oh, here, okay. isn't it? yeah so we, we'd go and we, 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 yeah we'll, we'll go and uh, we'll, we'll go and see if there's anything possible there and um, yeah, it turned out that wasn't. I mean, there was, there was, uh, yes, nobody, nobody was interested in making, in, in sending a film crew to that part of the world. It's just you know, very, very risky, very, um, yeah, it's just not very, a very user-friendly place. Um, I ended up writing, uh, collaborating on a book as a result of that, which financially wasn't successful but it became a bit of a sort of a cult uh, a bit of a cult book it just got me onto the radar of a few people I think and, and shortly after that I took myself to the Amazon again in the Amazon my focus was a particular fish there's a fish that lives there called the Arapaima which it's it's believed by many people to be the biggest freshwater fish in the world and I thought well if I can maybe if I can catch one of those that that's that's a story that's possibly a book I ended up it took me six years to catch one of those fish I was oh, I, I, no. I, I, I went back every year I, I, I did get sidetracked into all sorts of other things I mean I, I just I just I was spending between three and six months every year in, in the same part of the Amazon and, and just picking up the language, getting to know people, just, just immersing myself in, in all that. And I think it was during that time when I just had this realisation that a, a lot of the stuff that I'm seeing, I've never seen any of it on, on television. And there, there ought to be some kind of possibility, but I've no idea how to, how to go about how do I, how do I exploit that? How do I? Yeah, how do, do you do that? That's a big it, task. It, very, very big. That you yes. don't know anything about. Mm, exactly. Yeah. How to bring it to? So, mm. how did you uh, tackle that? Well, I think I, I, I did contact a few. Um, I, I contacted various production companies, and it, it, it never, it never went anywhere. I used to get contacted. 
I used to get um, I used to get contacted for information because um, you know we're going to do you know, somebody would call me up you know we we we're going to do um, a big natural history series we want to do we want to feature sort of river dolphin behaviour or something where where do you think we can go and film such and such behaviour something like that and I. And I because you were the expert in that. By well, this point. I, I, I had I had, a, I had a certain amount of sort of esoteric knowledge, so I I, I started off. Uh, I thought, yeah, okay. So I, I would I would give information um, to people making TV, and then after a while, I realised that I was I was not getting paid. I was not getting credited. I was not getting thanked. I was not getting a job out of it. Okay, that's enough of that. I'm not going to know more information for free. But it made me realise the value of what I had. And um, I guess people were seeking it out. They wanted what you were giving. They just weren't giving you TV money for it. Is a, TV is, 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 you know, it, it is a very uh, parasitic. Uh, uh-huh. it, it is, it's, it's all it's all about information, and and there are unscrupulous people out there. They they will they will they will suck people in. They will wring them out, and, and then they throw them away. And, and it's uh, it's you know there's obviously people with integrity as well. Yeah. But, but um, so. Um, yeah, I had no idea how to um, how to how to get anywhere from there. Uh, it, but in in the end, what happened? Um, this wasn't River Monsters, but in, in the end, what happened? It, it came down to a photograph. Um, I, I caught one of these fish, and then the trouble is when you're travelling on your own, what happens is you give a camera to somebody. This is in the days before phones and the days before a digital. So you give a camera to somebody and say, right, take a picture of me with this fish. I have no you, idea if it comes out uh, right. Is that you, it? Yeah, exactly. Sort of, you know, three months later, you know, something arrives in the post back at home. And it's all it's all out of focus. It's 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 a, it's just the it's just the ground with you know a few leaves and somebody's foot or something. Oh. You know. So anyway, so what I did, I bought a. I bought my own video camera with a, a fold-out, you know, um, screen, and so I caught one of these fish. I put it over my shoulder. I lined up the shot in the screen, I, and I got this guy just he just press the button. So he got some shots, some quite dramatic shots of this fish. Uh, I came home. Um, I managed to get that photograph in one of the national newspapers. It was seen by a TV producer in London. He said, "I think this is a great. You know, there's a great documentary here." I said, "Yeah, fantastic." Took him. Two and a half years to sell the idea to Discovery in in uh, in England. Um, so I did a series, um, quite a low profile series about the Amazon there. Um, then there's me thinking, great, here's a, here's my my, I finally got a career, and then everything went, you know, it then went totally quiet for the next the next three so years. So, so three years after it ran. Yeah. So that was a so that turned out to be a. A, a flash in the pan. So um, I need to c- compress this a certain amount because it's you know it is this endless saga. Um, <laughs> it's quite, it, it all was, builds on itself. Well, um, three three years later, the the director that I that I worked with on on that uh, on that series, who is a very he does a lot of reality TV, but he's he's got like a master's in visual anthropology and all sorts, and he's you know he just phoned me up. He said, oh, he says, I, you know, I just need. I just got to get out for a while. I got. I, I need a break. And uh, he says, well, "Why don't we go to India?" He says, "I'll take a camera. You take your fishing rods. We'll just film some stuff while we're out there. We'll we'll come back and we'll um, we'll just try and sell it and cover our costs." So I thought, "Okay, let's let's do that." But before we go, let's just phone up Discovery in in, in London, the the commissioning editor there. Just see it. Just check they might be interested in anything that. Um, in anything that we bring back. The next thing we know, we we go to a meeting, we are commissioned to make a series, we have to we form our own production company, and this is fantastic. Uh, so off we go. Um, we are then novices in the whole, you know, he directs, I'm I'm a presenter, You're a host. host yeah. We've got to do the whole thing of organising. We've got this budget, and we've signed a contract. And so I, I think I caught one fish, and then everything went everything went completely quiet. So we're in this position where we've got to make five programmes about fish, and we've caught one fish, and it's and, and it's like, what do we do? And it's it, it, it's like almost if there was just a magic button, if we could press this button and none of this had ever happened, we'd, we would press it. This really? Is, you, know, you wanted to yeah. all go away? Then? And, yeah, and then, but 
what that made us do, we thought we, we've got to we've we've got to deliver something. We've got to find something, and so anything at all to do with 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 fish. And this was when we came across this story of people disappearing in a in a river. People saying to us that some people have gone bathing in this river and they just disappeared. Never never seen them again. We go, what's what's that? Is it crocodiles? No, it's not crocodiles because there aren't crocodiles out. It's a, it's a fish. We're going what? <laughs> uh, yes, it's a, a man eater in fresh water. They go yeah. And anyway, we looked into that and um, we. Um, you know, sure enough, that there is a fish, which is the potential culprit there. And and um, what happened? The the, the, mon the monsoon came. Um, we had to go back to England, and then we had to come out again. But I caught one of these fish, uh, not a huge one, but about sixty pounds, sixty-six pounds. I think it was sort of four or five foot long, and it's a pretty hideous looking thing. And um, anyway, because it was a fairly sort of low budget thing that we did, um, we we managed to deliver that series, you know, everything was okay. But there was this feeling that there's, that there's a little bit, there's more, there's more to this. That's, we've only scratched the surface of, of this story. Um, a couple of years on from that, uh, I had a girlfriend who worked as an editor and a director for natural history um, programs. And she saw those programs and said, do you know what, there's, there's, there's more mileage here. And I said, yeah, I know there is. Uh, they've done a program about the Yeti, sort of an, an intelligent look at the, the myth of the Yeti. So we went along and said, look, here's this, here's this story, sounds crazy, a, a fish in a river in India that, that people say it eats people, sounds crazy, but when you look at it, actually it's, it, it, it's possible. Um, what the people there were saying was that, okay, there's, there's not a very rich fish population in that river for a, for a big predator. But being India, being a Hindu country, what happens is that they, um, you know, when, when people die, they are, they are, they are burnt beside the river, that the remains go in the water, you know, and, that, and the fish will actually eat, eat human remains there. And, and, and this is what people are, are telling us. Um, I also knew that these fish do grow seriously big, and if we could, if we could get a decent sized one out, that's going to be, that's going to be something that people are going to watch. Um, anyway, again, compressing it a little bit. Uh, so anyway, um, originally all we were going to do was we just wanted to get footage of this thing underwater, uh, which we did. Nobody had done that before. There's a, this particular very large fish called a goonch catfish. It looks like something um, Hieronymus Bosch designed on a, on a bad day. It's, it's, <laughs> it's got these, you know, it's got tentacles hanging off its tail and it's this brown sort of slug-like thing with big teeth and um, um, we, we got footage of these, of these things in this cave underwater. Um, but then it was a case of you know, word came back. Ah, you know, I think we, we want a better look at one of these. I think you should you should catch one as well. Uh, that's when it got challenging. And uh, to start with, I caught nothing, and then I caught a small one. But eventually, I, I ended up having gone back a few times. I ended up catching one as big as me. And it's a fair, it's it's a, it's a real sort of jaw dropping TV moment. I mean, it was it was it, it, to, to this day, it's one of, it's one of the moments. And and. And that was when um, Animal Planet came back and said, well, are, are there any more stories like nice, this? Nice, yes. And, 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 I, and I went, no, there's nothing like this. You know, it's <laughs> oh, like, right, this is one in a million. Said, yeah, but then thought about it, well, well, there's a few that are sort of similar, you know, maybe we can do something with this and maybe with that. I had no idea that I'd, I'd be doing it for nine years. Yeah, so nine mm. seasons. And mm. how many per season? Like, how many shows? Uh, it started off with seven. We've done a few specials. It went down to about six. So we, we ended up 60-something episodes. 60-something episodes. Mm. So, are there sixty-something stories, or are there a few that carried over a couple of? Uh, no, that yeah, every everyone's a different story. We, we've revisited. So there are that many stories. Yeah, that you yeah. Found, we, like we've that. revisited a couple of fish, and we've revisited a few places. Or so, you know, occasionally, we, we maybe got a different angle on something. But but basically, yeah, um, all all very very different stories. So it all worked out. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. And every, every year, but it was sort of, every year it was a case, have we got enough for one more year? So I never expected, because I think with a lot of shows, 
you know, if you're doing a make, you know, garden makeovers or something, it's like, oh, we can just be doing this forever. But, but yeah. we, you know, <laughs> that's evergreen. Some, something as like, you said. yeah, something like this. It was, like, it was, it really was. Every year we had to, we were really sort of like, oh, I don't know. Uh, and and what that does, it's very interesting. It makes you think laterally. You think you've completely used everything up, and then and then you just, you just. Um, yeah, you just come at things a slightly different way, and so, some of the later ones that we did for me, for me were more interesting than some of the early ones. Um, yeah. I watched the first episode of I think the last season, and you said this was like the biggest mystery. It was about the ship. Mm. Um, uh, I forget the name of it. What was the name of the uh, ship? The, the Laconia. Yes, mm. and I think you said something in that episode. Like this is like the biggest. Something. Well, it was it was me. in terms of. I mean, normally the programs, you know, for people who people who don't know it. I mean, it, it's it's normally it's normally a story about somebody who's been bitten or drowned, pulled under, or, or whatever, where somebody says, "Oh, there was there was a fish involved," and sometimes. You know, fisherman stories. Sometimes there's going to be a little bit of an, an exaggeration. Sometimes we don't really, we don't mind that too much as long as we end up as long as the, as long as that original story leads us somewhere leads us to a real animal that people haven't seen before or, or um, understanding a bit of behaviour that that's the, you know wasn't really um, out there before. Um, so normally, yes, it's it's death and destruction and. That gets people's attention. I mean, yeah, a lot yeah. of people go. It, no, is it hooks you right away. It really. does. It does. And again, you know, with my biology teacher's hat on, it's all about you know every single one of us. We we are all descended from ancestors who, who paid attention to dangerous things out there. You know, so that that fascination with predators is absolutely hardwired. If if you're if you're not paying attention, you become lunch. So it, it's there in, in all of us. Uh, and the Laconia. Um, Yes, basically a, a lot of loss of life. This was a, this was a, a ship coming back from South Africa up, up the Atlantic, got torpedoed. Uh, lots of people in the water, and quite a lot of survivors' accounts saying that there were fish in the water that were that were not that sharks were, that were biting people. Mm -hmm. Not sharks, mm -hmm. yes. Um, I think they saw sharks, but they're saying there's also some other stuff there. From our point of view, here, here's a possible story. I remember you went in that um, yeah. like submarine thing, yeah, like yeah, a ball yeah. or something. Like just seeing you go in that. Submarine-ish thing. What was it called? I don't even remember. It was well. It was a, it's a submersible. I mean, submersible. And, and, and homemade. You see, this is you know, that, that guy how made. He made it himself. Um, and how deep did you go? It looked like a Two thousand one hundred and fifty feet. Two thousand one hundred and fifty feet. So it's nearly feet. half a mile. And you were looking out the whole time through this like windowish thing because yeah. you were trying. You had a little. You had some uh, like bee. We had a, we had a dead pig strapped to it. What, he, yes, he, the he, dead he pig. bolted some wood to the front of the thing, and then we just tied a that tied a so dead pig crazy. on it. So that's so that's going in with the bait. So and, and it's it, it's a couple of feet away from me. Um, and I mean, to, to this day, I mean, that is that is one of the most memorable things I've ever done. And that, again, that's one of those moments where people are watching and they go, no, I wouldn't do that. And if I was watching it, I would go, no, I wouldn't do that. But because it's my job, you know, it's <laughs> right. like, and actually there was part of me that really wanted, you know, sitting, sitting at the bottom of the ocean at night, nearly half a mile down, and there are these like 16 foot sharks. Yeah. I mean, it's once you've Crazy. done it, it's like, how could I pass up the opportunity for that? The time it took to get to the bottom, 45 minutes to get to the bottom. 45 minutes of torture. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. can't even imagine. So I was like a child in the car. Are we nearly there yet? No, there's another 40 minutes to go. And then it's coming so it's back. Like, Let's just get together. Then yeah. you have to come all the way back. Coming back was amazing. It was because um, what we did when we came back, I went, I went down uh, three times altogether. And I think the first time I was down for like eight and a half hours. Um, but coming back, what you do is you put a little bit of air in the, in the tanks start moving and it's got these it's got motors so it's got little, little thrusters and what we did we flew up the face of the of the reef the water is perfectly clear we've got the lights on and it is just like being in an aircraft flying low in slow motion close to these like vertical um, limestone structures absolutely incredible amazing it's, so yeah, weird yeah. so now you still yeah. you get all of these adventures yeah. but they are being funded yeah, exactly. But you don't have to self-fund. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is your life like now aside from all of this? So are you 
Is there a, a uh, significant other in your life? No, there isn't. No, I, well, I tend to, so I, I, I get home, I spend sort of two days face down on the bed, uh, recovering, I go to the fridge, there's nothing in the fridge, it's like, oh, you know. So it, it, it's, it's, it's when, I, when I'm at home normally, it's just, it's recovering and it's, it's getting ready for the next one and there's, there's always sort of meetings and discussions about what we're, what's coming up. So it, it's, it is very much a full-time job. More than full-time, yeah. full life almost, right? Yeah, pretty much. And you, but yeah. you, you love it. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, no, the, the, I'll little, occasionally I will complain about little aspects of it, uh-huh. but uh, but but yeah, it's it's. I would never have. Yeah, if I, I would never have thought that I'd be doing something like this. Yeah. Are you like? Do you feel like pinching yourself sometimes? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And what yeah. about people, like friends and stuff? You have met so many people everywhere you go, and I, I get the feeling that you make a good connection with a lot of people that you meet everywhere. Well, do you know this again? This is another. It's another one of those little little things in, in, in river monsters, which the the thing about whenever I go somewhere and I'm fishing, it's it's a collaboration. So it's, it's, it's all about finding somebody local who knows the water, knows the fish, and, and winning their trust. And it's, so if I, if I can find that person, and if I can bring my experience between us, we can achieve something that neither of us could, could do on our own. And fishing is this, it is this universal language. Um, it takes a little, the thing is, a, a film trip is quite compressed. But it's all about, you know, who are these people? They're coming in, they want to do this, they want to do when I, when I sort of show them that I understand what they're doing, they're sort of putting a net out, and I'm just helping them, ah, this guy, he gets it. He, you know, so I'm, I'm a participant in, in what they do. So I'm not someone just taking photographs, I'm not there with a notebook. I actually understand. Yeah, you always have your notebook, so, I love that. Yeah, it's like that's this the Sherlock Holmes magnifying glass type thing. Um, so is that for show yeah. or do you really use it? Do you really no, I, I use it. A, a, lot, a lot of the time, yeah, we need a shot of you writing the notebook. And I was just going, I am writing in the notebook because <laughs> Dominic or you know, Duncan has just told me to. And you know, so, so don't. Sure. Although, so I do tell them now, look, if, if you take a photo, if you, if you film that notebook, make it really blurred. People will freeze frame. Yes, they will. They, they do that. They'll blow know? it up. Yeah. What's, that? What's that phone number? I wonder who that is. Let's dial that. <laughs> <Yeah, soon. yes. laughs> um, so no, it, it's... Fishing, it's yeah. If 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 I if I was just if I was just you know if I if I was a, a, a travel journalist, a foreign correspondent, an anthropologist, a bird watcher, I would not get the insight that I do into these river communities. I mean, something that we forget in a, in you know somewhere like the U.S. or the U.K. is if you go somewhere like the Congo or the Amazon, people there they 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 live off the river. They depend on the river. This it's central to their lives. It's a, it's a big deal. So if I if I show myself as understanding what that's about. I just have this way into to, to their way of life. I also make a big effort to um, to get at least something of the language wherever I go. And I, you know, I don't always have time, but I will try to um, get to the point where I, you know, I don't like going through a translator. Uh, I like to do as much as I can directly. Um, so you so pick up a little bit of each language where you are? I try to. I, I study in advance if I've got the time. Oh, yeah. so like how many languages do you speak? I only, sp- I, only, um, I only speak one semi-fluently, which is Portuguese. Oh, I thought you meant English. English. Yeah, yeah. And English. <laughs> English. I struggle with English sometimes. So Portuguese um, semi-quasi-fluently. Yeah, and then, uh-huh. and, and then, and then bits, of, bits of lots of others. So, you know, I've, I've started... I've started learning Spanish, but because that's, you know, I can understand it quite well because it's similar to Portuguese, but it really messes, you know, it just, it gets scrambled, unfortunately. But Spanish, bit of French, a uh, bit of Hindi, bit of Russian, bit of Lingala, a bit of Pidgin, uh, Thai, learned some Mandarin last year to go to China, um, have I said Russian, but normally it's just, it's just, but it's you know just a few greetings and just an idea of the sort of the structure and the way it is. It's it's surprising how you can tune into a conversation. Um, but you have to have so that ability too. I no, think, to you see, that, I, no, I disagree because I I think it's again it's like art. It's like a lot of people assume you either have that ability for languages or you don't. 
and I think the problem is most of us, when we're, when we're taught languages at school, we're taught badly. And it's, it's, so it's about having, um, it's about finding good materials, but it's also about having motivation. And so I'm, I'm not naturally gifted, but I, I have real strong motivation. Who knows you best? One person that you know, mm -hmm. who knows the real you, the that, real Jeremy? Uh, that would be my younger brother, I guess, yes. And how would he describe you? No, he's independent-minded. I don't know. He, he, he sees all sorts of different sides of me. He sees me when I'm quite grumpy. Uh, you know, I can, you know, I can, I can, I've never I, seen I, that I, side I, of you I can on be TV. grumpy when I, well, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, 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 I sort of, I'm slightly ashamed to say this, but I mean, I, I've, I've been known to swear quite a lot on TV. I mean, normally, I've, I've had these moments where, this is quite funny, well, it's quite funny now, but I've had these moments where I'll, I'll you know, I will have the big fish on the line. It's there, and then it's, it's coming in, and then it's gone. And, and, I, and I'll just lose it, I'll just lose it. And then I'll, 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 you know, I will sort of gradually come back to the real world. And that will be my director with the biggest grin you've ever seen. In your, <laughs> because, because for them, it's, you know, it's just, this is, this is TV gold, we love this. Gold, it's the ultimate. And I'm there thinking, here we are, we spend three weeks, we shoot maybe, I don't know, 50 hours of material, maybe more than that now with drone stuff and all the rest of it. And we're going to make an hour or forty minutes, and I and I just absolutely know what you know, that is going to be in. Everybody knows that last half minute of me completely. That is, you know, there's no way that's going to be in the cutting room floor. That is going to be in there. <laughs> and it's, so, so it's like, yeah. and um, so I get those moments occasionally. Um, but I know the thing. The thing is, I trust the people I work with. It it, it it's it sort of makes me look bad. But it also makes me look human, and I think yeah, that people is, want human. They, they want, don't want they perfect. Want human. Exactly. I mean, they, some people yeah. probably do. Mm. I don't, you know. But I think mm. that's true. They feel like they know you. Well, I th I, again, I think that is one. That is one of the the many small sort of cumulative things that makes makes River Monsters um, successful is because people can relate to that. They might go, "Oh dear, that's a bit naughty," you know, sort of. But actually, I would, you know, I would be saying that, and maybe worse if I was in the same situation. Who do people think? Jeremy Wade is. I don't know. A, a lot of people think I was just pulled off the street uh, to go and here, yeah, go and make these. Pr we'll just give you this money. Go and go around the world fishing, and it's, you know, nothing could be further from the truth. Um, people do actually say you are a role model to me or my children. I, you know, I like that, but you know, be, but I, it's sort of. But you are only seeing a you are seeing a produced version of me. I, I, the real me is not quite the same that that you see, and um, you know that's probably parts of me that I wouldn't want out there. But that's the same for everybody, isn't it? I do get the feeling that people who watch the programs get the feeling that they they sort of they sort of know me. In fact, the. the the, the way that the way that people do come along and say hello, it's almost like they do, they know me, and I think I, that probably applies to other people who are on TV as well. But I, I, I get the sense maybe it's a bit different. But so why do you think they think that you were like plucked off the street or off a fishing boat or something? <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, to be honest, I mean, before I worked in TV, I had I had no idea how it worked, right. and, and so. Um, if you have no idea how it works, because I suppose a lot of being now in in this age of reality TV, where where people are literally, people yeah. are literally plucked off this, it, 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 off YouTube or something. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you know. And, and again, I think it's this very, it's a rather cruel idea. It's a bit like the lottery. I think a lot of people are wasting a lot of time thinking that that uh, that there is this. There is this real sort of focus on fame, and, and you see people who, who are literally just plucked out of nowhere, and then they're on the telly, and, and then that could happen to me. Well, yes, it could, but the odds are astronomical. Um, in reality, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And but then, you know, what we do, what we do is not that. But I think lots of people, uh, you know, lots of people fish, so. See, so a, lot of, a lot of people say I'm a really good angler. I'm a really good fisherman. I, you know, I'm, I'm actually not. I'm, I'm, or, or I, I do, I do what I do very well. But it's, but that is very niche. Um, I'm technically not a particularly 
um, good fishermen. If you, if I was out in a boat with somebody somewhere in the States, somebody who knew what they were doing, they're going to catch a lot more than I am. Well, they would have some well, serious stories to well, tell if they did that and caught yeah. more than you. They'd be like, what? Well, they, yeah. I mean, you know, my, my thing is very much these, you know, it's, it's, it's going to these remote places where it's sort of almost catching what, what I used to do catching a fish was a bonus it's it's about going to places that are, that are hard to get to and then just having a bit of energy left over to, to then to then catch some fish so I, I can do that kind of thing and I, I now seem to have this almost um, status as an expert fisherman which I have had this very wide experience in the last few years but it's um, you know I, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm expert in the sense that some people right. imagine. Yeah. So who is the real you? I, I think I am, I am still a teacher at heart. This is a, and and I, I think there was, there was part of me that was very disillusioned with um, the experience that I had of, you know, I believed one thing, I, I, I became a teacher and it wasn't that at all. And, and so I, 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 I wanted to make a real difference to the, to the lives of, of, of people, um, school children, and I just thought, I'm, I, I can't do this, I'm not up to this, I don't have the energy, and, and, and so I walked away from that. And it's interesting how I've, now, I've come back to a situation now where, where I am, you know, going to say you're entertaining and, ed and educating you know those you can't separate those two things you know they, they are they're, they're all bound mm -hmm. up one with the other and, and, and the fact that, that I'm doing what I wanted to do back that back at the beginning of my working career but with an audience now globally in the millions it's fantastic it's very it's, cool you know, yeah. now just the yeah. therapy the therapist yeah. in me <laughs> has to yeah, yeah. has to just shift that answer a little bit the question mm. a little bit so who's the real you aside from what you do Ah. Who is the real you inside? Well, I, I, unfortunately, I think I fall into the trap of a lot of people. Is is I do tend to define myself in terms of what I do, and I think it's very hard. In again, I think I think one of the things, one of the sort of the sad things about the modern world is 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 if you go back to when I was young, people would work their their nine to five, and often it's quite an unpleasant thing that you do. But then you have some spare cash, you have time, you are the real you in in that other time. It's got to the point now where work just takes over everybody. So, so it, there's almost no distinction very often. Um, and I, I have trouble separating the real me from what I from what I do. And, I, and I, but I think if you're if you're doing the right kind of work, it doesn't matter. I think what's really sad is if you're doing the wrong kind of work and that becomes your identity. I mean, I you know I. I I don't want to disrespect people who work in advertising, but I mean, I, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't, um, to, to, to still be doing that and, 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 and taking myself seriously um, or, or, or considering that was all I was would, would be, you know, well, yeah, I'm glad I'm not doing that. Let's put it that way, right, let's put it that way. Well, right, but you can't be the person, the real you doesn't come out if you're not doing the thing that you that you really love or that's part of who you are, I think. Like for me, this is the real me. This is I the, think, and I like that. Yes. I don't well, know if I was somewhere else, like at a desk yeah. somewhere or whatever. Do you know, I think, I think the key I think the, the, the key is, and the trouble is this is very this is very hard to do. I think I think a lot of people would rather be doing something else. The thing is now, because you've got to have that monthly paycheck, you've got to pay your rent, your what your mortgage, whatever, you know, you cannot afford to just step outside and do something else, and I think the you know the important thing to do is 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 to be able to walk away from something, mm -hmm. and I've done that twice, and both both of those times people are saying you're crazy, you know you 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 have a guaranteed future here, you have you you, you have you're financially set up or whatever, it, particularly to walk away when you don't know what you're doing, but I think that can be the key. It can, it can be it's very frightening, and it it. it there is a possibility that it's all going to go horribly wrong, mm -hmm. but that's often the only way that, it, that it's going to go right. I like that. And I think that's where a lot of people with these big stories and big changes in their lives come from. They had to have made these big 
scary leaps or it doesn't happen. Yes. I don't think it happens so, I mean, it looks, to, I think to everybody else, it looks so easy to somebody who's super successful and you can see they're doing something what they want, that they like. It looks like it just happens Well, the easily. thing is, you don't hear from the people who tried it and, and, and failed. That's true too. Yeah. yeah. So, so it was a bit like history. You know, history is written by the winners. Right, and, and that's so, so true, that is true. So, so someone who's homeless on the street, how come you're here? Well, I, I, I had a job in whatever and yes. I decided I'd walk away from it because, and then, and then I've been here for the last 10 years. Right, nobody's okay. interviewing that no, person. Nobody's interviewing that person. That is true, good yeah. point. Yeah. What is your weirdest habit? My weirdest habit? Um, I do, I do that a lot. I go, um, I, I, I must stop doing that. Instead of, I should be happier with silence. I, I, I go, um, a lot. What's in your refrigerator? Nothing at the moment. What's your favorite type of clothing to wear? I like stuff that I've had for a long time. I, I, I was wearing a shirt that I've had for 18 years yesterday. What time do you wake up in the morning? It varies, normally about seven something. What's the last thing you do before you go to sleep? Turn the light out. Well, what's your ideal day? I, I like to feel sort of mentally and physically exhausted. I think going to sleep when you feel like you've really earned it is the thing. Do you watch TV? I haven't got a TV. Do you watch movies? I've, where, I, where I live, there's a little movie theater and they've just reopened. I've seen more movies in the last uh, two months than I've ever seen in the last uh, five years before that. I saw, I saw The Shape of Water, I saw Three Billboards. And do you listen to the radio? I do a certain amount. Um, I listen to radio. I used to listen to Radio Four in England. I've stopped listening to it. It's too depressing. Uh, it's although there, there are some good sort of comedy programs on there. I've been listening to French radio recently, um, not because I'm particularly interested in what's going on in France, but I'm trying to brush up my my French a little bit at the moment. And have you ever been a guest on a podcast? Not properly. I, d I did a music show a couple of years ago which has been archived on a podcast and we don't know there, there might have been about four people listening to that until now because you're on really famous yeah well we'll we'll see how this uh whoever you are out there I should look, whoever you are I, I i hope if will they have already seen this i hope it i hope it was an hour or whatever of your time well spent i hope you don't think too badly of me for some of the things that i said um i hope it was entertaining That was Jeremy Wade. Thanks again to our sponsor, Orvis. Shout out to Yvette. Yvette, thank you for supporting Really Famous on Patreon. On the next episode of Really Famous, I'll give you a hint. This famous person has a super famous face. You know him, you do. Want a glimpse ahead of time? Connect with me on Instagram or Twitter or YouTube where I post fun and sometimes slightly embarrassing sneak peek videos or sign up for Insider Scoop. There's a link in this episode's notes and at reallyfamouspodcast.com. You're the best. Thanks for listening. I'm Kara Mayer-Robinson, and this is Really Famous. Really Famous.